get on the line. Every athlete has heard this from their coach, and they all know what's going to ensue. For those of us who aren't athletes, it's the equivalent of getting ready for school, walking out the door, and seeing your bus already at its bus stop. You know you don't want to, but the only way you're going to get to school is by running to catch that bus. Most people despise running. They loathe it. But also, most people don't know the most effective way to run. My name is Jacob Labonte, and today I will be telling you that the most effective way to run in terms of speed and wellness depends on not only your preparation, but also the surface that you're running on. To begin, I'd like to look at an article written by Dengate, who is a runner-in-chief for Runner's World, and Shorten, who is his assistant, who also has a PhD. They talk about different shoes that are great to run in. One of these shoes listed at $100 on their website, but I found as low as $70 over other places on the internet, is the New Bounds Fresh Foam Gobi version 2. When they debuted, they were the best debut award winner, and weighing in at 9.1 ounces, these shoes are extremely light. And the diamond-shaped lugs on the bottom of the sh- on the bottom of the soles provide ba- balance and stability for their runners when they're running on um, trails or whatever surface they choose to run on. Another shoe is called the Hoka One One Speed Goat Two. Now, this was named after Carl Speedgoat Meltzer, and he's a director of a 50 kilometer race, which is, which in terms of miles is 31 miles. So as you can assume, these shoes are designed for those long runs, and they also provide their user with grip and cushion. Now, a side note about the cushion, the cushion on your, sh- on your shoe runs out way before the grip, so every four to 500 miles that you're running, you should be replacing your shoes, which for most casual runners is going to be once or twice a year. Now, moving forward, once you have your shoes picked out, it's important to do a couple things before you start your run. Me, for me personally, I like to run a couple laps around my house, just jogging, super slow pace, and then take about three to four minutes to stretch before I run. And also, three to four minutes after you run, you should stretch as well. Now this is gonna help prevent injury. Think about it. If you just go outside without warming up or stretching and start running, your limbs are gonna be really tight. And that running is going to make you more prone to injury. So if you stretch, get your limbs loose, you'll be nice and ready for a couple mile run. For beginners, I would also recommend planning a route. You might think, oh, I'm gonna run two miles, no problem. But two miles is actually a lot longer than you think. And I know from experience. For beginners, I'd also recommend um, using the walk-run method, or the run-walk method, doesn't matter the order you say it in. But that's basically, you run for five minutes, walk for two. Run for however many minutes you see fit, walk for however many minutes you see fit. And this is going to get you acclimated and more accustomed to running consistently because some people don't run at all. So it would be pretty intense to go and run a couple miles just right off the bat without having to walk at all. Now that we've talked about your preparedness for running, I'd like to move into what the best service to run on is in terms of injury prevention. And it's, it's really situational. It depends on you and your body. In an article written by Janet Kierman, who is a registered psychotherapist, or physiotherapist, sorry, physiotherapist, she talks about two different main ideas in terms of running on surfaces. The first is uneven surfaces. Uneven surfaces are not good to run on. And when you think about it, this is going to be not your pavement or any hard surface that's man-made because we have the ability to smooth it out, but it's going to be like a trail or a path or a forest or grass, Um, just natural occurring surfaces. And 
even when I'm running, I notice that these uneven surfaces, I'm much more prone to twist my ankle. I be, I'm much more careful when I run on them. Um, so for uneven surfaces, it'd be better to run on something smooth and stay away from those surfaces. But Janet Kierman also mentions hemolysis, and this is caused by foot strike. In an article written by Kennedy, who is a mechanical engineer, he tells us that foot strike occurs when your foot hits the ground when you're running every time, every time, every time, every time. And foot strike weighs two and a half to three times your body weight. So for me, my foot strike is right around 500 pounds, which is absolutely crazy to think about. Let's say you weigh 100 pounds, your foot strike is anywhere from 250 to 300 pounds. And so this, so foot strike causes hemolysis, which is a destruction of red blood cells. Every time your foot's hitting the ground, hitting the ground, you're destroying those red blood cells. And the more, the harder your surface is, the more red blood cells that you're destructing and the easier that hemolysis is going to set in. So in terms of that, you would not want to be running on a harder surface. You'd be wanting to run on those softer surfaces like grass, for instance. But you also have to think, now we're in a catch-22 because grass is also an uneven surface. So my personal advice would just be whatever feels better for you is a surface that you should run on. Now, in terms of speed, there is a clear-cut answer. In an article by Herbert Louis Luzier, who is an applied biochemics senior lecturer and also researcher with a degree in physiotherapy, she conducted this study of orienteers. Now, orienteering, it's not super important, but it's basically just a sport where users plug in different points on their GPS and they have to run to those points. Now, they tested eight elite orienteers and eight amateur orienteers over two different durations, a longer duration of two kilometers and a shorter duration of 20 meters. They tested them running on three different surfaces as well. One was road, one was forest, and one was a path. Now, a path is gonna be your hybrid between a road and a forest, some common middle ground. And they found that with both the elite, both the amateur running, both the two kilometers and both the 20 meters, every time the fastest surface was road, the slowest surface was the forest, and the middle, middle paced, second place winner for fastest time was the path, which is again, that hybrid between the road and the forest, so that makes sense. This shows us that in terms of speed, you're going to be wanting, wanting to run on a harder surface if you want to go faster. And in a study by Lithorn and Cooper, who are both PhDs in physics, echoes this. They tested a plethora of different athletes and recorded their 30 meter sprint times on a track, on a rugby pitch, on a grass hockey pitch, and also a football pitch. But you have to take into account that these were um, these are British scientists doing this, so their football pitches actually are American soccer pitch. So they went through, they tested all these different athletes, seeing how fast they were running, and they found that on the track they were the fastest, timing in at three point nine one seconds. On the rugby pitch, second fastest, three point nine six seconds. Grass hockey pitch, 4.01 seconds. And on the football pitch, um, aka our American soccer pitch, they were the slowest at 4.28 seconds. And this just echoes because, of course, the football pitch, soccer pitch, is by far the grassiest pitch of them all. And the track is obviously the hardest pitch. So football pitch is softest grassiest or football pitch is softest and the athletic track is the hardest and when we think about this too from a logical standpoint in two different studies 
the harder surface was the fastest. And this is because when you start getting on the softer, softer surfaces, your foot tends to sink in a little more too. So it's harder for you to push out, which makes those fastest surfaces, or the fastest surface, a harder surface. Now, throughout the course of this presentation, I've talked about a lot. I've talked about what kind of shoes you can get to run in, the essentials, warm up and stretching for beginners, the best type of surface to run on in terms of speed, which is a harder surface, and the best type of surface to run on in terms of your wellness, which is super situational. So overall, I hope that you beginners learned a ton and can now start your running career based off just this presentation alone. And for you more advanced runners, I hope you at least took one or two things away from this presentation. Thank you.